Hey, Fatheads, welcome to another episode of Sharing Our Pairings. The Sharing Our Pairings episode 94, Who Let the Dog Stout? I'm your host, John the Cigar Surgeon, broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network and, of course, heard on CigarFederation.com and YouTube. And if you're listening by podcast, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be doing some uh, stout pairing. I'm here with my co-host, Trippy Trent. Trippy Trent, hey, buddy. what's going on tonight, brother? Getting ready to drink some stouts. Can't wait. Tis the season, right? Mm-hmm. If people can't tell, the uh, frost coming out of my mouth is not uh, me being a super cool vape bro or extra re- um, <clears throat> retrohaler. It is, in fact, super, super cold right now. And it's quite cold here, but n- certainly not as cold as it is where you are. It's about 30, 31 here, I think. Oh, man. It's short, oh, 27. Short 27. 20, still shirt and shorts weather. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just hoping that we can get through our high ABV beers here before they freeze. Because, uh, you know, I think they're high enough ABV that they don't freeze, but we'll find out. One way to find out. One way to find out. Sharing your pairings, of course, is brought to you by Gurkha Cigars, the greatest manufacturers of cigars in the world. The new Heritage Toro just named number 20 in Cigar Journal's top 25 of 2016. Ask your local B&M about that today. Uh, but that's not what we're smoking today. Smoking a little epic. The Lepe Cabano. Oh, yeah. You can see it through my uh, super, super warm gloves. What are you smoking there? Same thing. A little robo action? Uh, I believe so. I didn't have a chance to measure it, but it, I, I believe that it's the Robusto. It's kind of like a Robusto Extra, maybe five and a quarter inches. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Because it, it's definitely uh, like a 50 ring gauge. Yes. But um, slightly longer. Of course, it's going to burn a little wonky in this weather. Um, you really shouldn't be smoking cigars in uh, minus eight degree Fahrenheit Bad idea. weather. That's just that's that's crazy. Really, you should go into a warm environment. But uh, we're not here to be sane on this show. We're here to do pairings because the show is all about beverage and cigar pairings. That's what we do. Uh, oh, yeah. A little bit about Epic. Uh, it's called the Epic Habano because, of course, it's got a Habano wrapper. It's the um, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with a uh, Cameroon binder, which is kind of uh, kind of cool. It gives it that little nuttiness Ooh. and some sweetness. Uh, Cameroon, of course, is tough as a uh, wrapper because it tends to be a little bit thin and uh, sometimes can crack, but great as a binder. And then it's got Dominican and Nicaraguan filler, and the MSRP on this bad boy is super reasonable. Seven bones. So cheap. So cheap. That is very reasonable. Very reasonable. I can Now that you mention it, I can actually taste the Cameroon. I love that. Um, I mean, the joke, of course, on sharing our parents is Cameroon goes with everything. Um, what I was hoping for... And I think we'll get into when the cigar kind of settles in because it's not really, sp- I find the um, Epic Habano isn't really spicy to begin with. It's kind of got some nuttiness, some creaminess, a little bit of uh, maybe hay, some cedar, mm-hmm. but no no pepper, no spice is really off the kick. And then it sort of builds up as time goes on. I think about the halfway point is when the spices will kick in. And you know, <laughs> Excuse me, we were talking about what would pair ideally with uh with stouts and i think you know we're looking for something with a little bit of spice and this kind of fit the bill i think yeah at least it will when that spice ramps up i'm i get a little bit of spice but it's mostly on the retro hail and that may be uh remnants from the cold i just had it's hard to tell whatever works really if yeah. i mean if you if you compare it with a good cold and get some extra spice whatever <laughs> whatever so uh we might as well kick it off before my beer yeah. start freezing i want to get them moving here so I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off first with uh, something I bought a six pack of, the uh, the shoots obsidian. Oh, Scout. my neck of the woods. Yeah, it's 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 easy, right? It's um, it's I mean, I don't know if it is such a thing, but it's safe to say that it is safe for as far as stouts go. You know, like, oh yeah. It's it, it's so many beers within Oregon have become such a mainstay throughout other areas that they're they're almost becoming typical, which is you know weird because. Oregon was supposed to be sort of this funky, cool, hipster place, and the beers are becoming so mainstream now. Well, some of them are. There's still there's plenty of weird, funky, hipster beers around here, uh, but that is one of the mainstays. I mean, Deschutes, I think, I don't know if they've already done it or if it's still uh, in progress, but I know they're planning on opening a brewery somewhere on the East Coast uh, nice. so that they'll have better distribution. 
course, the Chutes uh, is located in Bend, Oregon. They were founded in 1988, and they started as a small public house in downtown Bend, Oregon. Um, family and employee-owned brewery, which is kind of cool. Now, my beer is uh, a little bit low on the ABV, 6.4%, and I can tell that because it's starting to freeze to the edge of the glass. <laughs> that's uh, that's how you tell. Uh, 55 IBUs on this, so it's going to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of hoppiness to it, and uh, 220 calories, so doesn't really fit within my... Uh, my dietary plan for the day, but we'll see what we can do. I'm going to read off the malts because, of course, being a stout, it's got a bajillion malts, and that is a scientific term, by the way. Bajillion uses pale crystal carapils, Munich, black barley, roasted barley, and wheat. And then for hops, they actually have quite a few hops, more than I was expecting. Nugget, Bravo, Delta. Is this a military thing, Bravo, Delta? And then Northern Brewer. And they say obsidian has distinct notes of espresso, chocolate, roasted malt, black barley with just enough hop bite to cut through the sweetness. And what's cool, and I think Robbie's talked about this in the past, they're not so keen on hiding things from their, uh, from their, what would you say, viewers? They're the people that enjoy their, their uh, consumers. Consumers. Thank consumers. you. That's what I'm looking for. They actually have the recipe on their website, and you're thinking, okay, yeah, you know, cool, they get the recipe. No, no, no. They have the recipe right down to how long each particular portion of the recipe needs to take. Hop uh, additions and everything? Hop, every, hop additions wow. and everything. So, you know, that's a lot of confidence in a brewer that can that can po- post that on their website. And they say they have a lot of respect for home brewers. So that's really cool. I'm going to, uh, you can see this, this bad boy is, is definitely dark and black and very stoutish. And I'm kind of moving it around because it is uh, freezing to the edge of the glass. Yeah, so I got to keep moving. Uh, Got to keep it moving. So I'm going to take a puff, take a sip, and you can talk about your first pairing. Tonight. All right. Um, so I'm starting with a something I've never had before. It's from a brewery that I'm not, I wasn't familiar with until this week. Called Pirate. They're a brewery called Santium Brewing. Um, they are very, very small. They're down in I think Salem, Oregon. Let me just double check that. Yes, Salem, uh, which is just a, uh, about an hour and a half away from me. Um, they, their brewing system is 10 barrels. That seems that, small. That's very small. So that means that every batch of this they make, they can make 1,500 of these bottles. That's that it. It also seems small. Yeah. Um, so they're a really small brewery. This is the first time I've even seen their products around. Um, and they have uh, 15 taps, which is surprising for their capacity in their tap room down in Salem. They also have four casks, uh, which, which of course is the cask aged ale that uh, isn't, uh, isn't carbonated via CO2 in, in the keg tapping system. Uh, so anyway, this is Pirate. It's a rum-aged Yarr. coconut stout. That, um, that sounds delicious. Oh, I'm really excited to try it. Uh, an interesting thing on here is instead of showing how many ounces there are, you probably can't read that, but it says that this 22-ounce bottle is actually four and two-fifth noggins. Uh, I'm assuming what's a, that's... What's a noggin? I'm not sure exactly, but I think that's a pirate term. Yarr! <laughs> uh, here it's got a, a nice black color, but it's actually, you can't tell in this kind of glass, but it's actually a little lighter than I expected it to be. Closer to maybe a porter. And it's also kind of a thin like a porter would be compared to a stout which is usually pretty viscous well interestingly enough with the low abv on this deschutes i was kind of expecting it to be enough i've cheated i've had one already but <clears throat> i didn't really examine the viscousness of it but it is even at 6.4 percent it's got that nice thick quality that i expect with a stout it's you know it's it's i and and that's a good way to put it because i do find i do enjoy porters but there's a and we talked about this on the show before. There's a mouthfeel to porters that I just don't find quite as satisfying as yeah, stouts. Yeah, I completely right? agree. You know, it's it, and it's not an astringency. It's a thinness, and you can really feel that on your tongue and your mouth. When you take a, a stout, I mean, I don't want to say it's gross like syrup, but it is significantly more thick mm-hmm. and satisfying. And kind you know, of sticky in your mouth almost. Yeah, kind of sticky and very – so you don't – I think maybe the byproduct of that is you tend not to guzzle it as much as yeah. you would a lighter <laughs> beer or an ale. Just talking about this uh, Deschutes Obsidian Stout, I do actually get a lot, and maybe it's the temperature, because normally you would not want to drink stouts, and talking about temperature, you would not really want to drink stouts in the weather that I'm drinking stouts. It's not ideal. You kind of want to drink stouts 
I've heard between sort of 38 degrees freedom and 47 degrees freedom. You, you, and I typically drink my stouts a little warmer than that. Like I'm usually 40 degrees freedom plus, and I find mm-hmm. that sort of maximizes the multi character and all the different flavors that kind of come out of a beer. What, what are your thoughts on that, Trip Trent? Um, I agree. It's it's definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a mouthfeel issue for me with with the porters and with stouts. They seem to be more of a fall kind of drink than winter. Uh, I like something that's dark and hoppy for like the dead of winter when it's really cold like this, uh, which actually this kind of fits the bill. Uh, this clocking in at 59 IBUs, it's a little more like a black IPA than a, a true stout. I gotcha. Um, and I don't get as much rum character as I expected. Now, I'm wondering if that rum character is being... How many IBUs did you see that bad boy was? 59. See, it's pretty it, high for a stout. It, yeah, it does seem kind of high. And I'm actually commenting, like, when you said black IPA, that's... The Subsidian Stout kind of does remind me a little bit of a black IPA mm-hmm. because I do get a lot of that hoppiness up front, which, I mean, I got to say, not the best... Uh, choice to pair with Habano. I don't think those those flavors are are complementary at all. I mean, they're contrasting in a in a kind of a funky, not really great way. Yeah. Because my, you know, rather than sort of being left with the coffee and espresso uh, post post taste, I was gonna say post draw. That's how much I've been smoking, but post taste, I'm really I've got that hoppiness, and I'm not really going for that in my pairing. Yeah. So, coincidentally, I get the same thing with this beer. Uh, it's the hoppiness kind of cuts the, any sweetness from the cigar and it, it just doesn't, you don't, you're not left with enough of that roasty stout kind of flavor. There's a little bit of it up front, but it doesn't sit on your palate. The hops are what you get on the finish. There is definitely a very satisfying mouthfeel to the subsidian stout. It's got that exact, I mean, it, I, I could definitely go for thicker, but it's right in the stout category where it's got a nice, satisfying creaminess to it on the, on the tongue and the, and the cheeks. And then I take a puff of the cigar, and you're right, I do find on mine the uh, hoppiness is, is running over the sweetness of the cigar a little bit. Again, we're not, I'm not really into the point where the cigar's got a lot of spiciness to it yet. And maybe I should have kicked it up a notch and gone with the Corojo, which I know... <laughs> That that's the Corojo from Epic has got a little bit more spice to it, but kind of wanted to keep it in the Habano range, uh, match strength or strength. So uh, I'll just remind our audience here: they tuned into sharing our pairings episode 94. Who let the dog stout? I know, terrible name, but <laughs> after 94 episodes, it's tough to come up with a name. You're you're uh, tuned into uh, sharing our pairings on CigarFederation.com. Of course, we're rebroadcasting the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks to all our Armed Forces Radio Network listeners who are out there tuning in wherever you are in the world. Hope you're a little bit warmer than I am. Because she cold. She cold. She I am cold. bundled. You can just see the frost coming off my face. It, it cold. Of course, we're doing some pairings with Epic Cigars. Sepic Cigars tonight and Stouts. My mouth is already starting to freeze. No, it is not the Stouts kicking in because sadly I've only had about four sips. My mouth is freezing. I'm going to take a couple more sips before we move on to our second one here because uh, we got time. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, another interesting thing about this beer that uh, I was just reading about that may explain some of the, uh, the the lightness of flavor and how bitter it is, is it says they act, and also the uh, the lack of rum flavor. Because it really, like you, most barrel-aged beers, you kind of get a hit with the barrel flavor first, and then you taste the beer. And with this, there's not a lot of rum at all. And it says that they actually blend different rum barrels. So they'll they'll age beer in several different rum barrels. Then they'll make a fresh batch of this coconut stout, and they'll mix in the barrel-aged beer with the stout. So I think that's why the rum flavor is really not as pronounced as I was expecting it to be. That that makes a lot of sense. I think <clears throat> the problem with, with rum barrels is it is so subtle. I mean, especially when you're talking about a stout, which has so much character to begin with. When you mix in rum, rum is so subtle. I can see yeah, it totally very run over. So I'm going to great, great get into my second beer here. All right. This first pairing really didn't work for me. I love the uh, I love the Deschutes Subsidian Stout, but with this cigar, not a great pairing. So we'll move on to uh, something that, you know, is kind of hit and miss for me, which is Evil Twin Brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I love it, sometimes not so much. This is called the No Hero Stout. I don't know what that means. Uh, an alien-like outsider always flirting with oddity and exploring 
anxiety and paranoia, a style chameleon, a wonderful labyrinth, and a truly transcendent genius. <laughs> this is just too much poetic for me. It's impossible not to idealize out of proportion. This is a stout. It may not be a hero, but it's attractive, clever, and hungry for stardom. Well, that's a great story. But I don't really care because I want to know how it tastes. Evil Twin Brewing, out in two, t 2010. What's interesting is they kind of remind me of Nomad Cigar Company. They don't have a facility of their own. They brew through the recipe that they brew through other breweries. Mm -hmm. uh, currently at 10 different breweries in six different countries. This particular beer is brewed out of two row. Two Road Brewing Company out of Connecticut, which is Stratford, Connecticut. Don't go ha harassing them about the beer because uh, it's annoying. They don't know anything. They won't. They're not the uh, distribution arm for Evil Twin Brewing. If you have questions about Evil Twin Brewing, go to Evil Twin Twin Brewing. Don't go to um, Two Road Brewing. Anyways, that's my story. Uh, this is considerably thicker than the first one. I would say almost twice as dense to my eye. No freezing to the glass, even though we're not moving up very high in ABV. We're going from 6.4 to 7. Unfortunately, no other specs on the website about this, which is kind of a drag. I kind of love to geek out about the malts and the hops and IBUs and all that shenanigans, but sadly, that's all I got. Now, this is a different style than the first beer because this is an oatmeal stout, and I love me some oatmeal stouts. Mm -hmm. So, um, can't. I'm just trying to... Yeah, I definitely got some, oh man, actually the nose on this, it's kind of sweet syrupy. It smells like a, like a burned or a toasted toffee with some um, kind of espresso notes underneath that. So <laughs> that sounds right up my alley. I'm going to take some sips and let Trippy Trend here take right. the second beer tonight. So my second, I know, is one of your standbys as well, which is 1050. Oh, yeah, son. From Oscar Blues, their Imperial Stout. Get some. Uh, Oh, it's just a great stout. I went out looking for their uh, their barrel age version this week, and I called a couple places, and I missed the boat completely. Release Everybody's the barrel out. Barrel age, release it! Come on! Oh, they re they released it. I just release missed it, it again. Yeah, they should release it again. I'll get some next year, I'm sure. Um, Oscar Blues, for people who don't know, they're in Colorado. Uh, they've got kind of a really interesting story. They were the really the first big craft brewery to start shipping cans. And then if you've ever been in a tap house and seen a crowler, it's a 32-inch can that they fill up like a growler. They have a machine that blasts out all the oxygen with nitrogen and then caps it. And so you've got a 32-ounce can of fresh beer. Uh, they actually worked with Ball. They're the company that makes cans and bottles and jars and all that. Uh, and they helped invent it. So if you ever see a crowler machine or a crowler around, uh, you can thank Oscar Blues for that because they they definitely pioneered that. Making cans cool again, Oscar Blues. Oh, they really did. Uh, cans just weren't cool for years, and now they are. Uh, but back to the beer. I, I blame Miller. Yeah, front one. Uh, it's ten and a half ABV, so it's a it's a little bit of a heater. Oh yeah. Sixty five IBUs, which Woo. is real bitter for a stout. Um, but with this stout, the sweetness and the darkness tends to sort of, uh, I don't know, smooth out the flavor a little bit. So it doesn't taste like an IPA. It, you still get the flavor and the consistency of a stout, that viscousness that we were talking about. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take some sips of this and see how it pairs. So I'm going to talk about my <laughs> No Hero Oatmeal Stout. And she good. It's... So I've had Evil Twin Brewing stuff in the past where on some of their stouts it was way too sweet. This is this is kind of an interesting flavor profile because it starts out super sweet. I mean, you, you got that in immediate sort of uh, almost like a milk stout sweetness to it. But what's nice about it is it falls off immediately and you're left with some espresso, more like, like you know, rich coffee notes. Now it does have a nice lingering flavor to it, which I expect with a stout. So between draws, I'm kind of smacking my tongue, smacking my lips. And I'm still getting, you know, that cocoa and some coffee. And it's really coating the mouth, which is very satisfying. So I find that, you know, you can take a sip and you can take two or three puffs and you're still good. You don't need to take another sip again. This is, um, this is probably a great beer if you want to have a beer to kind of nurse throughout the evening. This is probably a great choice because you, you won't be pounding, or at least you shouldn't be pounding <laughs> one of these bad boys. So I'm going to take some more sips here. And let you wax poetic yeah. about the first beer. 
Uh, so this is a much better pairing than the first. You do get a lot of those roasty, malty kind of flavors. Um, it's got a considerable hot backbone to contrast that, but it's not. It doesn't taste like an IPA in any way. It's really the hoppiness mixes really well with the bitterness of the coffee kind of chocolatey kind of flavors. Um, and left on your palate, the finish is very, very bitter, but it's not hoppy bitter. It tastes more like the bitterness of a really strong coffee, which is great. Nice. And it's got that viscous quality that you only get in, in good stouts, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm kind of swirling the stout around in my mouth to kind of warm it up. And I'm getting, um, I'm actually getting a lot more cedar out of this Epicabano than, um, I'm not sure, maybe it's been a while since I smoked one, but I'm, I think I'm getting a lot more cedar out of it. And I think that's due to the sweetness from the stout, maybe running over some of the spices uh, on the cigar. But good pairing on number two, much better than I think number one. Uh, I think we've, we've rapidly established this cigar, not a good choice if you want to go with something very bitter, not, not really the uh, flavor profile that yeah. matches up. Yeah, the it, it it doesn't really have that spice to stand up to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you're going with something like uh, Dom Pepin, anything my father, mm -hmm. you know, that's crazy, crazy spicy, <laughs> excuse me, that would have gone really well. And I'm not actually, just for the record, I'm not actually coughing on my cigar smoke. I'm actually coughing because it's so cold. My <laughs> lungs are freezing and I'm talking so much that I don't have my chance for my lungs to warm up. Normally when it gets this cold, I'd actually wear a face covering because uh, it does get so cold that your lungs start to hurt. So just a heads up. Sorry about Can't really mask. drink and smoke with that, though. Mm -hmm. So this is a good pairing. Um, this is, again, this is kind of what I was hoping for. It's got that, like I said, the caramel, the coffee, the espresso. At 1050, it is one of my favorite stouts. I think that's one of the few stouts I've rated a 5 out of 5 star stout. Is yeah, that the I first think time I... you're having that bad boy, or have you had that before? No, I've had it before, but I think I forgot how balanced it is. It's really the perfect combination of sweet, bitter, and roasty, and and bitter from hops. I mean, bitter. It's bitter from the malts and bitter from the hops. But it's a really good kind of nicely rounded flavor and uh, deceivingly strong. Uh, yeah, it, it's you wouldn't guess this is ten and a half. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about strength on cigars, and we've talked about you know strength versus body, and strength versus body on spirits is sometimes tough to to sort of wrap in the same context, mm -hmm. but I've definitely had some really high ABV scotches that drank like they are 10 or 12% lower ABV. Yeah. And I think, like you said, the 1050, she, she's a ninja. Like it'll sneak up on oh, you. Yeah. I mean, you drink a third of that and you're thinking, oh, I'm good. And it, it really hits you. It can really hit you hard. If you have two 1050s, I mean, that's, Oh yeah. <laughs> that can rock that's your you night. Your socks. Yeah. Yeah, it's going really well. The um, I still haven't gotten any spice out of the cigar. Um, profile is still quite creamy. Nope. Yeah, um, very again, creamy, woody. Woody. Um, there's a little bit of earthiness, although the earthiness kind of gets run over by the uh, the sweetness and the malt character of the uh, stouts. Mm -hmm. But um, it's good. She good. And uh, just remind our audience, you, you are tuned into Sharing Our Pairings episode 94. Who let the dog stout? I'm your host, John, the cigar surgeon, joined by my co-host, Trippy Trent. We are broadcast live on CigarFederation.com and, of course, picked up on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Wherever you are in the world, hope you are staying safe. Thanks so much for your sacrifice, keeping us safe so we can be foolish and drink and smoke in the cold or warm weather, wherever we might be in the world. And today, unfortunately, it's cold. So I'm going to take a couple more puffs. I'm very excited about my last stout tonight. I am, too. I've got something a little that we don't get in this neck of the woods too often. <clears throat> I love getting my hands on beers like that. Limited yeah. time offerings or offerings that aren't normally in your area or new to your area. Yeah. Yeah, that evil twin, that no hero, very good. I definitely have a soft spot for um, oatmeal stout. St. Ambrose mm -hmm. up here does uh, really good oatmeal stout, but they also do a Russian Imperial stout. And I've put one of the Russian Imperial stouts down um, for two or three years, and it just comes out phenomenal. Uh, very, very enjoyable. But this last offering, this was uh, recommended to me by my local bottle shop, Kensington Wine Market. 
Um, this is the old Ooh. Rasputin Russian Imperial Stout. Now, curiously, I had never heard of this particular stout before, so that's kind of a shame because I was told that <clears throat> this was kind of at the forefront of the stout revolution and got a lot of awards. In fact, got the uh, 2014 World Beer Championship gold medal and at 94 points, which you'd think of as a gold medal would have been like 97 or 98, but maybe they just score really tough. They must be pretty harsh. Harsh, harsh. So this is from uh, North Coast Brewing Company located in Fort Bragg, California's, I think it's Medicino Coast. I, I, I assume it's got to be some Espanol, so I, I don't know if that's Medicino or Medicino, but uh, that's Fort Bragg, opened in 1988 and uh, opened and by President and co-founder Mark uh, Rudrick. I think is how his name is pronounced. Anyways, they're exporting to 47 states and now to Europe and the Pacific Rim. So widely available, very popular. And this is a big bad boy. I'm going to hold that up for our live listeners. Um, for our for our uh, podcast and audio listeners here, it is it is black, it is thick. I mean, you look at this, you know this is a stout. It's it's thick, it's viscous, it's very motor oil-ish, although oh, not yeah. not maybe to the same level as your 1050, but certainly up there. And nine uh, percent ABV, and kicking the kicking the IBUs all the way up to 75. Yeah, that's a serious stout. That's I mean, I don't I don't know if the IBUs are so high because you need to balance out the sweetness or what the deal is, but 75 IBUs, I mean, if you took the malts away, this bad boy would be uh Imperial IPA. Yeah, absolutely. But it smells fantastic. I'm actually getting a lot of hop quality off the nose <laughs> for what I can smell anyways in the cold weather. So I'm going to take some sips and uh Trip, I'm going to let you talk about your third and final sure. one of the night. So my last one is another one that, like like Old Rasputin, is very well known as a stout, which is Dragon's Milk. Uh, it's one of the better known uh, bourbon stouts. Uh, maybe not as well known as the uh, Goose Island Bourbon County, but it's a very good stout that is, of course, aged in bourbon barrels. An interesting thing about New Holland, who's the brewery that makes this, is they actually make their own bourbon and then use those barrels rather than as most companies would do. They would buy old bourbon barrels from somebody. That's really cool. They actually make their own bourbon and you can buy that and then they age this in those bourbon barrels. Then they actually have a But bourbon wait, that's that not all. Uh. Aged in those bourbon barrels aged beer aged barrels so they have a beer aged bourbon and a bourbon aged beer that's hysterical yeah it's great um they're in i think they're in new in holland michigan is that what mi is i don't remember yeah i think that's michigan i believe they're in michigan um and this is this is one that we never got out here it was impossible to find and just in the last two weeks they actually started carrying it in some of the stores here I'm not sure how permanent that's going to be, um, but I'm I bought a couple bottles just so I'd be safe. Yeah, I mean when you when you find something like that that's not readily available in your area, even if I'm I'm tasting it blind, I'll probably buy a couple bottles. You know, one just to try, and then one to kind of resample and make sure I had a proper sampling the first go around. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna give you a chance here to take some sippies. Um, so I'm not sure if this last stout is really what I was going for. Uh, I think, I think I made some bad choices tonight for my pairings and that happens because, you know, even though we're experts no, we're, we're not experts no. no, even though we do this for a living, no, no, we don't do this for a living. So even though we do this live in the internet, uh, unfortunately, sometimes we make some bad pairing decisions. And uh, tonight, I think yeah. I made some bad pairing pairing decisions. Now, this is 75 IBUs, and I was kind of expecting the multi quality of this beer to run over the IBUs. No, this is this is extremely hot forward. It's good. It's very, really? very good. Yeah, it's extremely hot forward. Um, if you took, like I said, if you took the malts away, this would absolutely be an imperial IPA, like hands down. Because the first thing I get when I taste this is all the hoppy quality. I, I might have to pick up a couple bottles of that because I don't recall it being that hoppy. Again, it could uh, or, be, it or at could, least coming off that hoppy on the palate. Yeah, it could very well be the temperature in which um, I'm I'm smoking. I'm drinking this because no, oh, that's again, actually very true. Yeah, really not ideal for the, and I can't really warm it up unfortunately because my hands are freezing too. But uh, I would say that the IPA, the IBUs in this, 
really kind of gives it an almost an astringent quality. So I get a little bit of the hoppiness up front, and then I get a little bit of malts, but the malts are really being run over by the the uh, hops. And then in the middle of the tasting profile, I really get this like quite bitter astringent quality to it. Mm -hmm. Now this one, on the other hand, is only 23 IBUs. So it's nice. it's sweet, it's malty, it's got that bourbon sweetness and the uh, just the the bourbon character that you expect out of a bourbon aged. Uh, stout, and it doesn't have any of the hops running over at all. It's great. Just rub it in my face, why don't you? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, we just happen know, to go polar opposite with that. Yeah, pairing. I mean, <laughs> thinking back to some of my pairing choices tonight, maybe what I should have gone is away from the imperial stout quality and more towards the milk stout quality, although. Mm -hmm. You know, the the risk with that is that a lot of times you get milk stouts that, um, because, you know, and Rob's talked about this before on the show before, that because the milk solids, the milk lactose does not uh, ferment the, the um, bacteria, the, not the bacteria, the yeast that's in there does not yep. feed off the lactose. It's non-fermentable. Yeah, so you end up with a lot of sweetness. You end up with a lot of sweetness. Now, that might have been too much for this cigar. I think it would have been. Um, the, for a Habano cigar, this is actually surprisingly uh, medium bodied. Very medium bodied. Yeah. I mean, uh, normally, usually, go ahead. Usually you expect some spice out of Habano, and this has almost none. Yeah, I mean, it's ex like <clears throat> the word I would use for this is balance. Like mm -hmm. for Habano, um, the wrapper is very sweet, a um, lot of nuttiness now, getting into almost the, the middle third here. Um, Cedar's kind of giving up a little bit. The earthiness is kind of going away. Mm -hmm. It's good. I mean, it's this is this would be an excellent gateway cigar for someone who's maybe a light to medium bodied smoker looking to get into something a little bit more full bodied, but doesn't want to be blown away with spices and pepper. And this is a great choice because this is not, it, like you said, it does not have a ton of pe like even retrohaling, and I'm retrohaling probably every other puff, and really not getting because I don't have a cold. I'm really not getting yeah. Any pepper. Well, and I'm not anymore either. Uh, now that I've gotten the first few through, I, I'm picking up more of just kind of cedary notes and uh, kind of, as you said before, burnt caramel. That's a good a good descriptor for this one. Yeah, I find, um, I mean, for people out there who maybe think of uh, popcorn balls, when you have a popcorn ball and the, the caramel mm -hmm. on there isn't really fresh caramel, it's more of a toasted caramel, and you kind of get that, you know, it's like uh, if you brown have brown sugar in a, in a frying pan or something like that. That's kind of the quality that, that uh, I think of in my mind. Now, what I'm going to do, because we do have a little bit of time here, is then work my way back through the three. Because, you know, one of the things we do on the show is we do typically three pairings, sometimes four pairings when we're crazy. And that's really a lot for your palate to digest. I mean, yeah. normally... When I do a, a whiskey tasting, what I do is I leave some in the glass and go back to it because oftentimes your palate just doesn't have the time to acclimate to those flavors or the aromas. So I'm going to take some puffs. I'm going to start back with my Deschutes Obsidian Stout and kind of work my way down. And uh, maybe you can talk about how that last pairing is going for you while I do that. I, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not sure I'm ready to. This, this is a great I, I've, this is the first time I've ever had this beer with a cigar. I've had it on its own before, but I've never had it actually with a cigar. And I think that this stout pairs perfectly with cigars. It's not overly hoppy, which can sometimes blow out your palate a little bit, and you're not tasting all the flavors of the cigar. Um, but it's nice. It's full-bodied, I guess. We were talking about body before. Yep, body versus alcohol. Body. It's definitely got some body, but it's not over the top. It's more of a sweet, roasty, smooth, mellow kind of flavor uh, with a little booziness from the, the bourbon. Going back to the uh, Obsidian Stout, uh, at only, only, I say, only 55 IPUs, what I'm uh, immediately reminded of is that how sweet it is compared to the second and third stout that I've had tonight. Although the uh, No Hero Stout is quite sweet, um, the Obsidian Stout, I think, comes a little bit more sweet forward now. And uh, I think, again, the the 55 IBUs are really balanced very nicely in that because it's not hop forward. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to this No Hero, which I think may end up being my uh, pairing of the night. 
only because of the choices I've made, not because of the brew. And you can that see, <laughs> if you can see that, uh, for our listeners there, oh. it, it is in fact, even at nine, uh, 7% ABV, it is in fact freezing to the glass, which is not optimal. <laughs> optimal. Yeah, not, not optimal. Yeah, I think that's definitely a problem to, with tonight for, for these particular stouts that we've chosen. Because um, everything we've chosen except for this dragon's milk has been pretty hoppy. Mm-hmm. And uh, hops definitely come out when it's colder. When the beverage is colder. Uh, yeah. So that's why like people like IPAs, ice cold, because then you really get that hop flavor and you don't get as much of the sweetness. And having beer that's negative five degrees probably, uh, all you're going to taste is the hops. Yeah, and I think uh, definitely in all fairness to these brewers, what I'm going to do is uh, taste these after the fact, let them warm up to at least room temperature, maybe a little under room temperature, and re-sample them, um, which, you know, it's going to yeah. take some take some time for them to warm up. But um, definitely on the uh, No Hero, the uh, sweetness is definitely coming through a lot more than the Deschutes uh, Obsidian or the uh, North Coast Old Rasputin. Oh, yeah. And that old Rasputin, again, I love it, but uh, I could see drinking it at this temperature not being uh, ideal for the tasting experience. Yeah, it, it, certainly if it was up to me, I would absolutely be requesting some, uh, you know, 60-degree weather out here, but yeah, sadly, sadly, no. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, it's um, it's still... And again, I, th- I, I really think it's a temperature thing because I can tell, I re- I mean, I really just can't get any of the malt character off this, the Imperial Stout. And I should, as an Imperial Stout, I absolutely should. I mean, the whole point of a mm-hmm. Russian Imperial Stout is to be big, bold, and bad. And really all I can taste is the IBUs. So I don't think this is the uh, optimal tasting environment. And really that's on me. But uh, I do have to comment that given the temperature here, uh, given just how freaking cold it is, I have not had to relight this Epic Habano at all. Oh, yeah. Which, My burn's razor sharp. Yeah, it's remarkable. Uh, <clears throat> I think I've cracked the cap by chewing on it, but, um, <clears throat> you know, the cigar's still burning. Well, first of all, it's still lit, which is remarkable. Second yeah. of all, it's burning very, very cleanly with no touch-ups and no lighting. So, relighting. So, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, and same here. I mean, I haven't had to relight at all since we lit up at the beginning of the show. Uh, which for me is actually kind of a surprise because I tend to talk too much and have to relight constantly. Yeah, I find that too. Even when I'm doing a review, really my goal when I'm doing a cigar review is to smoke as slowly as possible, um, ultimately <clears throat> really to the point where my cigar is almost going out, um, which is why my smoking times tend to be, I think, a little bit longer oh, yeah. than a lot of other people. Yeah, I do the same thing. If, if, you're, if you don't have to relight it, you're smoking too fast. Mm-hmm. I'm going back to this coconut stout, and while I still don't know that I would consider it a stout, I would really call it a porter because the only real difference between the two is a, is the mouth feel, mm-hmm. and this one has the mouth feel and the flavor of a porter. Uh, but I I am getting a little bit more of the rum and a little bit more of the coconut. Uh, I mean, I do love <clears throat> Oscar Blues, just to give some love out to Oscar Blues, because mm. <laughs> really, they're one of my favorite brewers. Um, they do have that Death by Coconut. Oh, I almost picked up a couple cans of that. Have, have you had that before? Oh, yeah. I love it's it. so good. I actually, so good. I had a business trip in February to London, and we went to some little pub in Manchester, and they actually had Death by Coconut. They had more American beers than they did British <laughs> That's hilarious. It was, and it was crazy because they had like three Floyds. They had Founders. They had stuff that I can't even get in Oregon. Step up your game, America. Start shipping to trip. Seriously. What the hell? What the well, hell? We, we are getting Founders this coming February, which I'm pretty excited about because so far the only Founders I've had was in Manchester or stuff that people have sent me. Nice. Well, just to run to our audience, you are tuned in to Sharing Our Pairings, a very cold edition, episode 94, Who Let the Dogs Stout? 
currently recording on December 14th. Christmas is rapidly coming up. Uh, hard to believe it's really in, you know, 10 days. I, I probably should finish my Christmas shopping. But I yeah. uh, just want to thank all our Armed Forces Radio Network listeners who are out there, hopefully warmer than I am. And, of course, all our podcast listeners who are out there in droves all over the world. Um, and truly all over the world. We have lots of listeners from Germany, Sweden, Finland, the U.K., Australia, Canada, uh, and really everywhere in between. Um, lots of people tuning in now from Nicaragua, probably because they're, Ooh. you know, drinking some rum and, and at their local factory or whatever and uh, checking out the show, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I really missed time the show tonight because uh, normally we'd go right up until the end of our uh, <clears throat> our segment but uh, sadly, I've not done that, mostly because I think I'm going faster than I normally would. <laughs> You're trying to get it over with. It's, I mean, it's you cold. I'm not going to lie. It's cold. Fortunately, next week cold. when we do our show, it'll be, uh, uh, I'm trying to think in freedom degrees, it'll be like 27 degrees warmer next week. No. Oh, which, that's which about is what it lot. is right now here, and I'm freezing. Mm. And I can see my breath in my garage. Like it's 27 degrees Fahrenheit where you are right now? Yeah. Yeah, see... For me, I'm really good down to about 10 degrees. And th- after that, that's when it starts to get really, really cold. Anything over 20 for me is, you know, because I've been doing this so many so many years now, yeah. sitting out in the cold. Anything above 20 is fine. Um, although I do find for Cigar of Profile, and I have to, again, give some love to this Epic Habano, um, sometimes it is really tough to pick out flavors in a cigar when it's this freaking cold out. But not having that problem. Very balanced, very sweet. I mean, it's it's really actually hard to believe this in Ecuador and about a wrapper because, and, and maybe it's just what I'm used to currently in the market, a lot of Ecuador and Habana wrappers and the blends that they're paired with, very spicy, very peppery. And this is not that at all. It's just so medium, like perfectly right in the smack dab medium. Yeah, it, it's it's a really good cigar, but it's not a great cigar for stouts. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> and I think I almost wonder because uh, again, I know he's got the uh, Dean Parsons from Epic has the Habano or the uh, Corojo, pardon me, and the Corojo mm. does have a lot of juice to it, like in the in the sense it's got some zip on the on the pepper and spice scale. So yeah. maybe that would have been a better choice to go with these stouts, but uh, I think I'm going to have to say. For me tonight, uh, given the the environment, and again, I'm going to have to go back after the show is done. I'm going to sit down with these beers and kind of let them warm up and uh, and resample because I think my palate is all jacked from this temperature. Well, I but, mean, maybe we should just go inside and grab some epic Corojos and start over. Yeah, maybe we should just start <laughs> over. You know, I'll just, I'll just toast myself in the oven and warm up first. Um, <laughs> or we can do a redux show <laughs> where we'll bust out because I know I've got – um, I think I've got at least three or four Epic Habanos, three or four Corojos, three or four Maduros. I know I've gone through the Maduros like crazy, and I've actually got one of the new Epic uh, San Andreas. Ooh. And <clears throat> I'm hoping to get it in before the end of the year so I can see how it tallies up on my top list of cigars for the year. Um, because, you know, I love San Andreas, and uh, I, oh, yeah. I love Dean's blending profile. So I'm kind of looking forward to that bad boy. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and take some more sips here and – but I think so far this No Hero is kind of my uh, my pick of the night. Where are you at with your pick of the night? I went back and I tried all the others, and the Dragon's Milk is just such a fantastic beer to go with cigars because it doesn't it doesn't blow out this cigar at all. Uh, you really still get the the cedary sort of a little bit spicy flavors of the cigar coming through, um, and the beer even on its own is just fantastic. Easy pick of the night. Now, is that is what? Because I mean, when you say dragon's milk, automatically I immediately think right. It's going to be a milk stout. Is that a milk stout or is that a still um, a regular? Like, do they classify it on the bottom? No, they they don't classify it as a milk stout at all. It's not a milk stout. The dragon's milk. The the name dragon's milk is just, uh, I guess, because it's so good. It's like the milk that comes from a dragon. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of a, a silly name, but. It, it really is a spectacular beer. Yeah, I don't think I'd want that job. Milking a dragon doesn't exactly sound very fun to me. Oh, no. If you've seen Game of Thrones, you can't even get close to them, even when they're chained up. Yeah, you're, you're, not get get, you're not getting close enough to milk them. Unless you're like a tough job. So uh, with that, I think we're going to have an early wrap tonight because I am freezing. Um, <laughs> but I'd say 
Um, just thinking out loud, this I think this epic of battle would have gone really well with some rums. Yes, absolutely. Um, I probably could have gone with some uh, more balanced bourbon, something that's not really spicy or peppery. But, <clears throat> you know, I think this would have been good with some bourbons. What other pairings can you think of off the top of your head that maybe would have uh, been a little bit better tight? Actually, I think it would go really well with, like, uh, a Speyside Scotch. Oh, nice. I, I think that would be just a fantastic pairing with this cigar. Not really the weather for for a space side scotch, but no, um, not at all. Yeah, I think something with um, maybe a little bit of heather or floral characteristics. Yeah, exactly. Very good. So we'll be back next week. Um, I think we're gonna do. I think we're agreed that we're gonna do a Tuesday show, yeah. rather than a Wednesday show. Normally we're uh, live Wednesday, but uh, tomorrow we're gonna or next week, of course, with Christmas coming up, we're gonna do a little bit of shuffling, a little bit of rescheduling. So you'll uh, see that on our our show page at cigarfederation.com. On a Tuesday night show at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, It'd be a little bit warmer for me. Hopefully, still Hopefully. not crazy cold for you, Trip. We'll see. But, but uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, this week, of course, there's no cigar chat because Logan is on location, and unfortunately, we don't have a guest. So that's just how it goes. This is Christmas season. I apologize, but thanks very much for all our live listeners. Thanks very much for all our podcast listeners out there. We'll be back next week, and as we say on Sharing Our Pangs, drink better, but drink less.